you and I didn't talk about what we're going to talk about beforehand. Um, and I don't want to take away from, from your, uh, your vast stores of knowledge above mine. But I, recently, what do you think about, there's a Microsoft patent that just came out connecting cryptocurrency to human biometric activity. Have you heard anything about that? I've seen it float by. I haven't done any in yeah. research on it. it. It doesn't surprise me. Yeah, uh, I'm not gonna. Uh, I probably won't get obsessed about that until yeah. it really, you know, we see some f actual fruit from it. Yeah, but it makes it makes perfect sense. And, and in terms well, and it, it's. Uh, I mean, your view is a global one with the uh, international <laughs> economic order. Obviously, it hasn't even come close to that point yet. I've picked apart the patent in detail, and it's bizarre. Uh, cryptocurrency tasking tied to, to uh, people's uh, neural brain waves, their body heat, their blood flow. I mean, they're serious. It's in their patent. Now, they haven't done it yet. It's just a patent application, you know. So like you're saying, you know, it hasn't gone anywhere from there. It hasn't got to the serious level yet. But I'm, I, I'm uh, like you, I'm an information hound. As a matter of fact, my wife tells me I don't read any fiction. And she tells me that uh, that's not healthy, Kevin. <laughs> you know, you need to kind of take a break every now. I haven't read fiction, and this is just my problem. And in 50 years, because I'm a data hound, I just drink up data constantly. So I'm I'm researching all this stuff all the time, just because it's kind of how I'm wired. But so that that what Microsoft has done there has has not come out of the patent yet. Uh, and as you probably know, they just did an advertisement. Microsoft did for their uh, virtual reality using Marina Abramovich. Uh, you probably heard of her, the lady that is the occult guru for Hollywood and some people in politics and does spirit cooking and all that crazy stuff. Microsoft actually used her in an ad and they got such blowback that they pulled the ad. So uh, it just, uh, uh, I, I think Microsoft, obviously we need to keep an eye on those rascals. And we now see Bill Gates and his global vaccine, which I was going to ask you about your thoughts on Bill Gates and his global vaccine. What do you think about that? The original, the original technocracy movement at Columbia University, I keep going back to that because it's really yeah, important. Yeah. <clears throat> they specified an economic system in which the people of that system would be considered as merely cogs in the machine. Mm -hmm. They were human capital. Mm -hmm. uh, well, that's, that goes, that's even too high a view. They were simply just uh, part of the machine, a necessary part of the machine to make any machine work. Mm -hmm. Like if you have a factory, you have belts and conveyors and whatever, things stamping and drilling, but you have to have some people in there too to make sure the oil can gets you know right. applied and right. whatever, sure. so people are part of people are part of machinery, and that's the way they looked at it. Within their their technocracy study course, <clears throat> they stressed the service sector that they called health, mm -hmm. and they wanted they they specified to have complete control over the hospitals, over the Goodness. medical community, Goodness. and over the lives of the people and the health of the people in the system. Goodness gracious. They laid it all out. <clears throat> and there was no, I mean, they didn't have the technology like we have today. Yeah. But they laid it all out. And let me, this is important, because I know somebody's going to say, well, wh what kind of quacks existed back in that day? <clears throat> okay, let me tell you. Plum University was the seat of progressive progressivism in the United States at that yeah. time. Nothing good ever came out of Columbia as well. Yeah, it doesn't sound like it. <laughs> <clears throat> but they only had one building, Hamilton Hall, in that day. They had a full footprint basement that was quite large that they used for temporary projects, they called it. At the time in 1932, when technocracy was rolling at Columbia, the technocracy group got one half of the basement. Nice, huh? They just, they gave it to them. They yeah. said, you can come, you work here. Our professors and engineers and science, they'll come down and they're gonna help, they're gonna be part of it. They're gonna help you, blah, 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 get all this stuff working. <clears throat> so the other half of the basement, and there's no walls down there, it's just a basement. The other half of the basement was occupied by the first iteration of IBM. Yeah, wow. 
that's where they built the first tabulator. Goodness. That very quickly ended up, by the way, in Germany to do things like control train schedules and do statistical work on populations and stuff. Oh, don't get me started on that. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> but these scientists and engineers that were working on technocracy yeah. were rubbing shoulders with the visionaries of the century. The progressive vision. Yeah. Yep. And believe me, they didn't have the technology then, but I can guarantee you they're thinking forward thinking people we know where this is going and we know what's yeah. going to exist down the road. We're writing the specifications now. And when the technology is there, we'll get, we'll have it. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you're so right on target. And, and sadly uh, it's going to, I think it's going to happen just because of the size they get control of the economy. Everybody's going to march along like, like soldiers, they get control of the healthcare system. Uh, yes. Okay, you you uh, you take our algorithm, or you become a part of our system, or you don't get that surgery that you need. You know, you talk about utter control of a population. Goodness, it's all, it's all by algorithm too. Yeah, this 